we have seen some great baseball north of the border. Two teams fighting for everything, including a shot at playing in the postseason. The Indians got late game heroics, not once, but twice from Jan Gomes, only to see Ryan Goins and the Jays walk it off in the 10th. Today is the rubber match of this intense three game series as Trevor Bauer looks to keep Toronto's offense at bay. Next on Sports Time Ohio. ship has been docked off the shores of Lake Ontario here at the Rogers Center for the past three days and tonight the series culminates with a thrilling finish as the Indians will try to take two out of three from the Blue Jays. Hi again everyone Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. The end result last night for the Indians was a loss but what a comeback for the tribe and we saw something very rare something you don't see very often and that is one guy hitting not one but two game tying home runs late in the game. Well it's almost identical pitches for Jan Gomes he comes up and he ties the ball game up at two and then in the ninth inning he ties it at three and it, he brought him back and it sent a lot of excitement through that dugout you got to go back quite a long time to see uh, game tying home runs in the seventh and the ninth inning for Jan Gomes one guy has done that recently that we can remember that was Ben Broussard but from the seventh inning on it was uh, unbelievable for Jan Gomes Ben Broussard did it back in Cleveland the Indians did go on and win this game the second one though gave them the lead it didn't tie the game they had the lead they went on to win the ball game. All right so when you look at tonight's pitching matchup it's intriguing Trevor Bauer who seems to have turned the corner really pitching better and they're going to need him as we go down the stretch here in September and then you've got the enigmatic knuckleball of R.A. Dickey. Well for Trevor Bauer he's pitched well in his last two starts he's been keeping the ball down in the strike zone I think that's what he's going to have to do against this ball club today and he's going to need his good curveball and pretty much every pitch that he has in his arsenal. Trevor Bauer had a start against the Blue Jays this year. He lost it. But on the year, he's 10 and 10. And you can see 1 and 0 and a 126 in his last two starts. He's matched up against the knuckleballer, 6 and 0 since the All Star break. There's no one way to tell hitters how to go up and face this knuckleballer. I think the shorter stroke you have, the better it is because it has late movement all the time. He can throw it at various different speeds and he can be awfully tough. You know, you go up there, you. When it starts about the letters, go ahead and swing because if it starts mid thigh or below, let it go because that ball is going to dance all over the place. And Rick, it would appear that Dickey has a distinct home field advantage. He has the second best batting average on balls in play at home in Major League Baseball this year at just 211. We'll be back with the first pitch Indians Blue Jays coming up next. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. By your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud sponsors of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO.
Welcome inside the Rogers Center where the roof is closed for the series finale between Cleveland and Toronto. Blue Jays have taken the field behind knuckleballer R.A. Dickey. We'll take a look at the Indians starting lineup tonight for Terry Francona brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Jason Kipnis is in the leadoff spot. Francisco Lindor will hit second and it's Michael Brantley third. Carlos Santana, Jan Gomes, Lonnie Chisholm in the middle third. Chris Johnson gets to start at third base and he'll bat seven. Abraham Almonte is hitting eight. And batting ninth at first base is Jerry Sands. Northern Ohio Honda dealer starting pitcher is R.A. Dickey, the knuckleballer, making his 28th start of the year. He's won his last six decisions over his last nine starts, but in his last two starts, he's given up six first inning runs. So we'll see if the Indians may be able to get to him early before he settles in and gets a feel for that knuckleball. In his career, he's three and two against the Tribe, one and one in the Rogers Center. Let's check out the defense brought to you by Ram. Behind him tonight is going to be Revere, Pilar, Bautista in the outfield, Donaldson at third, Tulowitzki at short, Goins is at second, Smoke at first, and Tholey is doing the catching. Andy Fletcher calling the balls and strikes. Clint Fagan is at first, Paul Emmel at second, crew chief Jerry Meals down at third. As I said, the roof is closed, so our window systems game time temperature irrelevant. Outdoors, indoors, a pleasant 72 degrees. And Jason Kittner stands in to lead it off. Kittner's just one out of nine in the series. And Dickey's first pitch dips low, ball one. A fastball there. Oh, started about fastball, fastball. Up high. Two balls and a strike. And Kipnis able to lay off that knuckler as it danced down and in. Well, you might want to look for the fastball here. He started out with two. Take a chance. And if you don't get it, then you can take it. He got it. He sucks it to deep center. Pilar back. Has room, makes the catch. <laughs> Keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. It's an age old adage with regards to a knuckleball. If it's high, let it fly. If it's low, let it go. For Trevor Bauer, stay out of the beginning. It's something he's been able to do his last two times out. Right. Francisco Lindor. You see, he stands deep in the batter's box. Some hitters will choose to move up to the front of the batter's box against the knuckleball. There is no hard and fast rule with what works against what no. doesn't. Everybody has their own. Kind of feel for it. Everybody has their own idea on what they can do, but honestly, you can flip a coin. Yeah, you have sometimes you have switch hitters that go the other side of the plate, so it doesn't mess up their swing. Lindor strikes out two down. Let's go downstairs to Andre Knott with more on R.A. Dickey pitching in particular here at home. All right, I've been told a couple different things. The dome is closed right now, as we know. Now, some people have told me that around 7:30 they may open it up. But when I talked to Brad Mills and Terry Francona, they said, look, when they had Tim Wakefield, they would change their rotation around so he could pitch inside domes. He says knuckleballers like domes. They like to control the atmosphere. And they said that's the same thing with R.A. Dickey. They said that he likes being inside here with the dome closed, takes away the wind, and he can use his knuckleball effectively his way. You think that's why the dome is closed tonight? Because he can, can control it. Well, I mean, it's the home team's discretion whether it's open or closed. It's totally up to them once right. before the game starts. I would think if you have a knuckleballer and he feels comfortable with it closed, why not? One ball, one strike. John Gibbons, his club, leads New York by a game and a half in the American League East. Blue Jays have won eight out of ten. They're 75 and 57. Indians have won nine out of 12. 
64 and 67. Try began the day. Five back in the wild card race. Indians will head to Detroit, then Chicago before this road trip is over. But a big rubber match here in Toronto with the Blue Jays tonight. The one two. Brantley shoots it to left field. Revere makes the catch. Indians go in order. The Blue Jays are coming to bat. On the hill for Cleveland tonight. Let's look at the lineup he'll face for John Gibbons. Toronto Blue Jays brought to you by Toyota. Benton Revere leading it off. Josh Donaldson bats second. Jose Batista third. Then Edwin Encarnacion, the DH, followed by Troy Tulowitzki. Justin Smoke is sixth. Kevin Millar, Pilar is seventh. Ryan Goins with an 11 game hitting streak. The game winner last night, Josh Toley, will bat ninth. And Trevor Bowers, our Northern Ohio Honda dealer starting pitcher. And Bauer making his 27th start. Had a no decision back on May 3rd against Toronto, but he didn't fare well. Four and a third inning, seven hits, six runs. He left trailing six to two in that game. But the offense got him off the hook. High fastball in there for a strike. Ben Revere out of the leadoff spot, three for nine in the series. And he got on top of that high pitch. And drops it in the center field for a base hit. Check out the tribe defense, which is brought to you by Ramp. It'll be Brantley and left, El Monte in center, Chisholm Hall over and right. Johnson gets the start at third tonight. Lindor at short, Kipnis second, Sands is at first, Gomes doing the catching. And we'll bring up Josh Donaldson. Donaldson two for seven with a triple in the series. Runner goes first pitch. Gomes fires to second. Safe. Revere has his second steal as a Blue Jay. Well, he wasted no time. Anytime you go on that first pitch, you feel like, okay, they have an idea or a time that they want to do it if they get this aggressive early. It was a short hop, and Kipnis had to make sure he caught the ball first before he could apply the tag. You see that glove had to come up. He had the hand on the bag by the time he applied it. So it'll go as a stolen base for Rivera. Blue Jays were successful late in the ballgame last night. It proved to be a key moment. And Dalton Pompey came in and stole two bases. Well, you know, when you have a ball club and they, they hit the home run ball, they've hit 185 on the year. You know, they lead the league. You, you have to score more ways than one. If you have some speed, you can utilize it. You may get 
your home run hitter some fastballs. A little bit more if you got guys that can run in front of them and they try it. Of course, you don't want to get thrown out. Josh Donaldson taking a strike, and it's one and two. Again, we may see the high strike. We saw it yesterday, uh, you know, up in the zone. I don't know what it is with this crew, but I've seen higher strikes called here than in a long time. Breaking ball, foul out of play. Now the one two pitch. Much of the talk after the game last night on Toronto's side of things was that for a team that has been so reliant on guys like Donaldson, Batista, and Carnacion, the home run ball. They found different ways to score last night. Right. Sacrifice fly, three of them, and then ultimately the big home run. But it was from Ryan Goins, the number nine hitter. Yeah, a guy you don't expect out of, out of that lineup, but it was. That's fair. And the Blue Jays. We'll take the lead. Donaldson with his major league leading 109th run batted in. I mean, how, how nice was that? As far as the hitter goes, he gave in, he gave himself up, and he just tried to slap it the other way, and he couldn't have had a better pitch. It was a fastball away, and he hits it down the first baseline. That was the perplexing thing last night in the ball game when he had runners at first and third, and he tried to bunt. With the kind of hitter this guy is, it sort of surprised everybody. I think in the ballpark, us included. He ended up getting a sacrifice, but there's a great job of hitting, and the Jays will play from in front. When we showed you highlights of Bauer in our opening segment against the Angels, before that against the Yankees, everything was knees yes. down, down, down. Here in the early going, pitches have been up in the strike zone, and the Blue Jays are already two for two with a run in. One ball, no strikes to Jose Batista. Now take a look. There's the first base hit from Rivera. It's up. That's about letter high. He got on top of it. There's another elevated fastball that uh, Donaldson slapped the other way. Yes. Batista went around and the count one and one. Ball drops in, and Batista falls behind one ball, two strikes. Take a look at this pitch on our Nissan pitch tracker. It looked like he took really a lot off of it 76 miles per hour, but it drops into the strike zone, so he has him down to the count one, two. Just outside. Two balls and two strikes. He tried to he tried to hit with that two seamer that pitch to bring it back to the outside part of the plate. He's had a good one his last couple of starts. A two seamer that'll run back the outside part of the plate for the righties. And he missed with the off speed pitch full count and a slider there.
Donaldson is off on the 3 2 pitch. It's ball four. Well, he ended up patient and working the walk. Bauer leads the league in that department. That's number 68 for him. Our stat of the game is brought to you by Buick in their last 30. Toronto 24 and 6, averaging more than six a game. That'll win you a lot of ball games. Their first three have reached here. They already lead it one to nothing, and Edwin Encarnacion is the batter. Carnacion had his 26 game hitting streak snapped last night. It's tied for the second longest in Blue Jays history. Yeah, when you look at a guy that, that swings like that, that's pretty impressive with the kind of power he displays. He had a what, eight game consecutive extra base hit streak. Put together a tremendous month of August. Up high, it's 2 0. Oh. Digging a hole for himself. It's not a way to pitch to a team that can hurt you when they fall behind. He, he was ahead of Bautista and he ended up walking him. Right now, trying a tough time commanding the fastball. A high helped him out. High ball. Left field. Brantley coming in, makes the catch. One away. Downstairs to Andre. You know, guys, the success that Trevor Bowers had in his last two starts have come to him basically getting his two seamer and his curve to work together. Now, Arch, let me ask you this that two seamer that he uses has been great against lefties. This lineup for the Blue Jays full of right handed batters. Can he be just as effective with it against right handed hitters? It could be if he can get it out and get it to come back like he does the left handers. I think he can aim it at a left hander's hip where it can come back, but he doesn't have a focus point. I don't know with the right handers. Unless he can really focus and get it to do that. He tried with Bautista and he missed. But he's going to have to continue because you're right, Andre. It's all right handers for the most part, other than Revere and Goins. Totally the catcher, I think, is a left handed yeah. batter as well. That's but right. the, the meat of the order right handed, heavy, and dominant. I would think it would be a little tougher. To throw it to the right handers unless he can get a feel for it. And I hope he does. Because that, that's the pitch where he got a lot of ground balls his last start against the Angels. Yeah, that's what he's looking for right here to get out of the inning. Troy Chulowitzki has gone two for seven in the series. Pops it back out of play. He got a little help from Encarnacion. He had a 2 0 count and he, he swung at a, a fastball that was up out of the zone. He popped it up. The 0 2. Breaking ball, no chase. Ball in the dirt, two and two.
pop up. But out of play. Tillowitzki has collected a hit in five straight games. Blue Jays are 24 and 5 when he's in the starting lineup since coming over from Colorado. Well, Bauer would love to have a ground ball here and get out of the inning. And stop it from being a long one. Already 22 pitches. Breaking ball, base hit, center field. Donaldson around third, he will score. Batista stops at second. Tulowitzki's 12th RBI of the year, 2-0 Toronto. The sequence here to Tulowitzki, he got ahead of him early the, uh, with a high fastball. There's the slider away. Now watch, he elevates a fastball, he fouls off. 0-2 count. There's the curveball he didn't chase. There's the breaking ball he in the dirt. He went with a high fastball again. He fouled off. Now he hits a breaking ball that stayed up. So he went to a curveball again. To Lewinsky lined it into center field. So another base hit. And that's a two run inning. And out comes Mickey Callaway here in the first. This is a ball club that you can't let get ahead of you. Because they will go out and, like they say, they try and punish him, and they, they turn into like a softball team. Trying to take your will away. So it's up to Bauer here to try and just minimize it now. Only one out. Already action in the Indians' bullpen. Terry Francona does not want to see this get away from Bauer and the ball club early. Plus, there's an off day tomorrow. So the feeling probably is if you need to burn up the bullpen, you could do it with the off day. But right now, we'll see if Bauer can find his way out of the inning. Justin Smoke, a switch hitter. 0 for 3 so far in the series. Two on, one out. Straightens him up, ball one. Another points difference from the other side of the plate. No, there's just no command for Trevor tonight. Not for the fastball, there isn't. That's a pitch. Everything revolves around that. If you can't throw your fastball for strikes, guys will be waiting for that off-speed stuff. And that's the number one pitch you have to establish early for both sides of the plate. The fastball down and away. And also the fastball in, even in off the plate. Scoop by Kittness to second for one. Back to first. Double play. No, they call him safe. Sands wasn't on the bag. Yeah, they say his foot was off the base. And you know what? It might have been a little space there. That was really well turned. Kittness gave uh, Lindor a great feed. They'll look it over on replay, but the first base umpire, Cliff Bacon, was right there. Going away from the play. Kipnis makes a good throw. Lindor comes out. Now, from this angle, the ball beat him, so he looks like he's out. But is Sands' foot on the base? That's the question. And it looks like, uh, yes, Terry's going to challenge it. Terry is going to challenge it. He was called safe, so they're going to have to see. We're going to have to see enough evidence to overturn this. Well, we're going to need a better angle yeah, than, that. than that. You're right. Because there's nothing conclusive in that to overturn it. Not from that angle there was it. You know, from where we sit, and I know we're, we're very high up here, it did look like there was some dirt between his, his shoe and the base from my angle. I, I was surprised that they could make it that close, Matt. Yeah, he came off. You know what? But it looked like I saw some dirt. We'll have to get an angle and, and see. Well, I don't know. He came off, but the question is, was the ball in the glove before he came off? He, he's still on. He's still on. Ball's in the glove. I think he's out. Well, if that toe is on the bag, yes. I, I would agree. The ball beat him. But uh, the umpire was standing back in a pretty good spot, and he was looking in, and he said no, and, and then he... 
you know, motion like he was off the base. We saw one angle up on the video board here that looks like the. Well, it's just hard to tell. That must be their feet, you know. So they, they're going to have a, a probably a couple other different looks that we don't have. Take a look at it on the tape. Let's see over here. Can't tell there, but it is off the base there. I mean, you can see it. He's not. Yeah. Well. It was turned nicely. I, I didn't think they had a chance because Kipnis had the range to his left and he was going away from the bag. He had to make the throw to Lindor. Lindor had to make a long throw. I know smoke doesn't get down the line, but. I'll tell you what else is strange is they're opening the roof right now. They are. They must have thought the inning was over when they saw a potential double play turning. Where do you see that? And they're going to call him safe. So the call stands. Third, two down. I thought they had to wait till in between innings to start the process, but they've actually started opening the roof right here in the middle of the inning. Well, here we go. The set by Bauer and the pitch. Takes about 12 minutes for the roof to fully open. Check the swing, got a piece of it. Count there, you see the some, some 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 daylight peeking through as that the roof begins to open here in Toronto. Sort of strange after just a half an inning. Now one one. I have to assume that maybe a forecast changed. I think they went off Lee's cell phone. He told them, go ahead, you can open it. No rain. There it is. Yeah, he's got the remote up here to open it. He went, yes. I do believe. Yes. On the appeal, he's out, inning over. Blue Jays get a pair though. And after an inning, it's Toronto 2, Cleveland nothing.
on your smartphone or your tablet. You can stay connected with live radio broadcast stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Carlos Santana, Jan Gomes, and Lonnie Chisenhall do up for the Indians. Fastball. Santana chops it to short to Lewitsky, flips it over, one away. Our player profile is brought to you by Levin Furniture. R.A. Dickey. Goes by the initials, not Robert Allen. Born without that ligament in his elbow, and that that caused him a lot of strife early in his career. Cost him a lot of money, too, way back when. Yes, it did. But he's been able to overcome it when he transformed himself into a knuckleball pitcher, and he has a number of different Gurus, if you will, that, that he leans on for advice. It's a very small community. You think about yeah. how many knuckleball pitchers there have been historically in the game. But he he gets advice regularly from Charlie Huff, Phil Necro, and Tim Wakefield. Those are his three mentors. Well, this is like a small fraternity. And yeah. they they've imparted a number of key points from one of which I thought was really interesting. And I, and I, I think it was Charlie Huff who told him, stay in the door frame. So if you can envision pitching in a door frame, that's what Charlie Huff basically told him. And if you watch him, he's pretty much straight through to the plate. Doesn't fall off, doesn't lean to one side or the other. Right. Stay as straight and, and at the plate as you can. Keeps himself in pretty good position. Well, he had three quick ground ball outs. He sure did. Blue Jays go right back to work, up to nothing, middle of the second. Center here in Toronto. And the only thing higher than Ryan Goins last night was probably the CN Tower because this is the first walk off home run in his entire life. Not in Little League, not in high school, not in college, not in the minor leagues. But last night, he picked the perfect spot for the Blue Jays to get his first ever walk off home run. Yeah. On a team of thumpers, he's the one that walked it off. That that was the amazing thing. That's what everybody can't believe around here. But 
He had a good game last night. Made a wonderful catch down the line in right field as well. Got an 11 game hitting streak and. You know up until that home run. He was robbed of a couple of hits by Jose Ramirez. One Ramirez dove in the hole between Boy, first and yes. second. Another one he went up the middle and flipped one over. After which Goins took his helmet off and kind of fake like he was going to throw it at Ramirez. Playfully saying man you, you robbed me a couple of times tonight. Foul back out of play. Well, I'll tell you what, he made a couple of beautiful plays last night. Ramirez able to get up and make the throw. The thing that I noticed about Goins on that is that he had already started to round out as though he was going to round the bag and, and maybe think about a double. Yeah. And then he saw Ramirez dive and make a catch, and he had to make a beeline straight to the bag again. Well, he thought it was going to get sure, by. Sure, he's was thinking it's a base hit yeah. all the way. By Ramirez, that was great range. Well, when you're a complimentary piece like Goins is, he's getting an opportunity to play in a great lineup. If he can just work his way and keep a short swing and get on base, boy, he's going to get pitches to hit. You, you know, you don't have to be the star in this lineup. You just try and get on base and let everybody else. You know, let's take a look at him. He's running, running. There's his turn where he thought he was going to make the turn. You're right. And all of a sudden he's like, are you like, kidding yeah, me? Yeah, no kidding. Run through the bag. Well, you're a second baseman yourself, so you go out and you got to make some plays. And he took it, he didn't take a hit away because it was a foul ball, but made a wonderful play. Yeah. Strikes out here. Back to back case for Bauer. Take this our circle case strikeout of the uh, night. What was that? A little breaking ball. I don't know if it was a slider, but boy, he's upstairs a lot tonight. I don't know what it is. At last start, everything was down. This start. Everyone is different, but he's upstairs. Got that one down. And Josh Tolley doesn't play much. Only when the knuckleballer's on the hill do you see him behind the plate, but he lines one in the left field. Yeah, they, I mean, he, he caught Dickey's last start, and then they optioned him out to A ball, whose season ended, but it's September, so they were able to call him right back up. What's well, up? Many teams carry three catchers. Yeah, so you don't carry three, and you know what? They're not going to get uh, their catchers beat up by this guy, the knuckleballer. It's not an easy job to do. They don't want Martin going back there and you know taking foul tips or trying to catch it. It's not an easy thing to do, catch no. a knuckleballer. And that's that's what led to Tolly getting his opportunity here in Toronto as Ben Revere steps in. Martin was catching the knuckleballer early in the year, and he. It just it mentally beat him up more than it physically it takes its toll, but mentally it really got to him. And then Navarro got hurt, and so Tolly got his first opportunity when Navarro was down. And then they just decided we don't want Martin catching him anymore. Rivera laces one right back up the middle, and he's two for two tonight. Already five hits for the Jays. They were four for eight the first time through the lineup. Here you go. I don't want to say it again, but that's right down Broadway. Another pitch upstairs. Trevor will not be long for this game unless he gets the ball down. You have to wonder: is it is it mechanics? Is it you know? Is, he doesn't pitch here very often. Is it the mound? That's the first the time. And I don't know. I really can't tell you. I mean, he was down so well, and he pitches better on the road than he does at home. He was down in his last start at home. Everything is upstairs. I really don't know. Already the second visit here to the mound. You know, usually when Trevor has got it, he's really good. When he does it, he, he has big innings. He gives up big innings. But you can't fall behind this team. And the bullpen is up now. Oh, now Jeff Manship, the right-hander, is getting loose. Yeah. I mean, out of the five hits, they are all singles. But this is a team, they won't hit singles for long. First in the league in run scored, in doubles, in homers, in sacrifice flies, and in walks.
forty one out of the last fifty road games Indian starting pitchers have given up three or fewer earned runs forty one out of fifty that's some kind of role that's how you have a winning record on the road swung on and missed Donaldson he went dialing long distance and came up with a busy signal I just uh, that really he slowed that hook down. I did see Almonte before the pitch in center field move over to right center field because if you remember Donaldson just slapped a fastball away with a man in scoring position to right field the last time figuring maybe he's going to do it again but then that means power is going to have to execute his pitches. Well and after Donaldson hit that triple off the end of Almonte's glove in the series opener he might be playing him a little deeper now too. Well, why not? I mean, you could always come in. The ball carries in this ballpark. Again, up. Well, when you see, he goes outside and hits that pitch. It was an off speed pitch away, and look at him. He was playing pretty shallow, and it went off his glove. He was a half a step away. You could see he was a little upset with himself because he did get leather on. But, but that's a full sprint, about 30 yards. Yeah, but when you're when you're playing the middle part of this lineup, you're better off playing a few steps deeper. Donaldson sends one deep to left. Brantley can't get it. Tolley will score. Revere's on his heels. Lindor's throw. It's a two run double for Josh Donaldson. And a 4 0 Toronto lead. Well, he continues to light it up. First extra base hit. There it is, a breaking ball up. Brantley goes back, he jumps, he doesn't get there, he's about a half a step away. That ball goes halfway up the wall into the chain link fence, and the only guy that would have scored is Revere. They get him the extra RBI. Gomes tried to well, get the ball to the plate. Back. He never touched the plate when he dove by it there. It doesn't matter now. Well, the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen has been made. A quick night for Bauer. He goes just an inning and a third. Jeff Manship is coming on. It's already 4 0 Toronto. Didn't look like Revere initially touched the plate when he dove past Jan Gomes. But Man, he just did right swipe it. it. Right hand looked like it landed on it. Yeah. It was flying by. Well, four zip Toronto, and 
Jeff Manship comes in to face Jose Batista, still only one out in the inning, and a runner at second base. Now, a very short night for Bauer. Giving up six hits, four runs, and still responsible for the man out there at second. Two balls, no strikes. The first three Blue Jays to start the game reached in the first. And after Trevor Bauer struck out Ryan Goins to start the second. Three straight hits for the Blue Jays to extend their lead. And Bauer out of the game. Four pitch walk. Batista's walked twice already. And this one is not starting out well for Cleveland. Carnacion fly to left in the first. He chased a pitch that might have been out of the strike zone. The American League Player of the Month for August. Not surprising. He led the majors with a 407 average. Extra base hits with 22. Total bases with 79. He had 35 RBIs. That only tied yeah. him for the league lead because his teammate Josh Donaldson yeah, also had 35. How about that for competition? That's within Ooh. the team, my goodness sake. Well, right now, Manship's afraid to throw a strike. Let's go down to Andre who has a little more on Encarnacion. You want to know how great a month he had along with Donaldson? Now, check this out. With his, his RBI on Monday, that made them the first tandem since the Boston Red Sox in June 1950 to have multiple players driving at least 35 runs in a month. Wow. Think about that. June 1950. Yeah. Long time ago. And that's how explosive this team can be. The pitch. Strike on the outside corner. Manship takes a look. Two one pitch. Three balls and a strike. Now they're gonna they're they're relaxed right now. They've got an early lead. They're not getting too aggressive and trying to do a lot of damage you're going to have to come to them now. He's only thrown one strike out of his first eight pitches. Back to back walks loads him up. For Troy to Lewinsky. had an RBI single in the first. Manship did uh, pitch an inning in last night's ball game. Didn't allow a hit and had two strikeouts. Tonight, the first two hitters he faced, he has walked. There's no room for anybody out there now. Well, Manship ready. He fires until Lewitsky takes a strike.
By the way, Murph ended up looking it up there. The 1950 Boston teammates, Ted Williams and Bobby Doerr. Oh boy. They had the 35 ribbies. Oh, one pitch. Swung on and missed. They had three guys. Oh my yeah, Dropo. Walt Dropo also had. Yeah. So they had a guy with 40, 37, and 36 all in the same month. Right. How's that for Hello. You? They have any pitching that year? They didn't have to. <laughs> it's, yeah, I'd, sl I'd slug you. Now the 0 2. Popped in the air. That shouldn't get it done by Kipnis anybody. Kipnis is backpedaling. He'll make the catch. They're going to try to score. Here's the throw. Gomes, did he get the tag? No, he is called safe. Wow, what a slide by Donaldson. Did he get the plate? Is my question. He came around and it looked like I, I would tag him. I don't know if he left earlier, they're saying, but he got around. That's just great hustle. You can afford to take a chance when you have a four run lead. I mean, this was Kipnis, and he was pretty much set. As the throw, look at Gomes come back. Does his hand get the plate? He gets around him, and boy, just misses the tag. And that might be the very point, the back point of a home plate. And so it goes as a sacrifice fly. Look at that. Yeah, he got it. Wow, he got it. That's unbelievable. So let me ask you on that play. Yeah. I mean, the infielder is told go back until you're called off. Is that does an outfielder have to make that play? Well, with a runner at third base, I'd have to look at it again. You could, if they could get there and call him off, I would, because they're going in. He was pretty much flat-footed when he caught the ball, because he was backpedaling. If they could have gotten there, I wasn't sure. Remember I didn't think I, did, I didn't think it was deep enough to get him in. Remember, you've got Lonnie Chisholm on right well, field. He's still learning the position. It doesn't the nuances. Well, that's what I'd have to look at it again. Maybe in between innings, we'll go back. I can get a look to see if they could have called him off. Now the one one. Nice stab by Gomes. There you go. He's backpedaling, backpedaling in there. Almonte, that he's too far out of play. I didn't even see Chisholm Hall there. But it it looked like uh, Kipnis was it. And Gomes was way out in front of the plate unless that throw took him out. Why didn't he stay back to the plate? That's another thing I'd, I'd, I'd have to look at. Why was he so far out in front of the plate? Well, I'm assuming because he didn't want to get uh, in between short hop. Well, that's what I'm going to say. I don't, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to look again. It's weird. He's way out in front. Oh, that throw may have taken him way out in front, and you're right. There it was. It would have. He had to go get up it. Up the line a little yep, bit. Yep, it was up the line. It wasn't an accurate throw. So it's five to nothing, Toronto. Two on, two out. And he strikes out Smoke to finally end the inning. But Josh Donaldson with a game breaker drives in a pair. Five nothing, Toronto.
Miss the Indians and Tigers on Saturday, September 12th. 10,000 fans will get a Terry Francona scooter bobblehead courtesy of Meritech. And all fans can enjoy a post game fireworks following. Check Indians.com for the tickets. Down low, ball one to Chris Johnson, who leads off for the tribe here in the third. I've seen him throw more fastballs here in the first time around. He's thrown at least five fastballs. Chop to third. Donaldson sets and throws. One away. They tell me that there are a few teams who will see more fastballs from R.A. Dickey. Those are lineups that he feels have a different approach against them. Maybe that are going up there and looking to do something simple, you know, simple and basic, like slap it the other way or whatever the case may be. But I was told the Indians are one of those teams that he will throw more fastballs to you than know, normal. It's tough when you're a hitter and you're getting geared up for a knuckleballer to, to look for the fastball. You know, because oh, yeah. you rarely see it. So when you see it, it sort of shocks you. You know, but I guess if you're a hitter, you might want to go up there for the first pitch and look for it. And then readjust. But, you know, most of the time he's going to throw you the knuckleball. To me, the shorter stroke you have, I think the easier it'll be to put in play. And I'm not saying to square it up and line hit line drives. You know, but the longer swing you have, the more chance you get you give yourself of swinging and missing because that ball dances. Almonte fouls one back. I found it interesting that Dickey says maybe once or twice a game will he throw a ball that has absolutely no rotation on it right. whatsoever. Zero. You he can said, just read the he name. Said, That's just luck. Yeah. He said every once in a while you just everything comes out perfectly and you get that. He said the key is being able to throw it with about a quarter of the revolution. Uh -huh. You can get it to that point. He said then you can control it know which way it's going to break. Well. Locked him up with a heater. A two seamer. Watch the movement on well, that. And then he goes inside with it too. You know you see that ball inside you jump out of the way and it comes back. Catches the corner of the plate. Well, uh, he is on a roll right now. He's retired eight straight to start the game. Jerry Sands steps in. Missed outside with another fastball. 1 0. Look at that fastball coming back. You see the movement on it. Another one. You know, the other thing you will see, and, and you and I have seen it before, is that Dickey he'll he'll throw one of those change up or one of those knuckleballs that floats in it in the 60s. Where he's able to really back to back heaters. At 83, and that's what you do. That 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 sits in your mind. You don't know what to look for now. You get a knuckler here. Out of play. That had some wicked movement to it as well. Tulitsky throws it up and the Indians go in order. Nine up, nine down for R.A. Dickey. It's 5 0 Toronto.
enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Well, Jeff Manship comes back out to work here in the third. But after Kevin Pillar, you've got three straight left handed bats. And Kyle Crockett is up in the Cleveland bullpen. So Manship might only be on to face Pillar. Manship had his troubles. Came out on the second and walked back to back hitters to load the bases before surrendering a sack fly and a strikeout to end the inning. Brantley calls for it. The left fielder has it one away. Here comes Terry Francona. Yeah. And we've got a timeout for a pitching change. One batter, one out. Here in the third, it's 5 0 Toronto. Baseball and Fox Sports 1 returns with another doubleheader filled with playoff implications. Rays take on the Yankees and the National League Wild Card leading Pittsburgh Pirates take on the Central Division leading Cardinals. Coverage begins at 12.30 Eastern on Fox Sports 1, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Kyle Crockett on to face Ryan Goins. Swinging sends one to center and Almonte puts it away two down. Time now for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Palazzo. Tampa began the night a game and a half in front of Cleveland in this wild wild card race. Inside ball one to Josh Tolley who singled and scored in the second. Yankees beat the Red Sox at Fenway in a game that featured 28 hits. New York beat Boston. And they'll maintain, they'll at least keep pace with Toronto should the Blue Jays go on to win this thing tonight.
There's still so many twists and turns they have to believe left in this season. Well, yes, and everybody possible. gets back into their own division for the last month, so that's the uh, that is the, the factor right there, and that's I guess why it's, it's done like that. It's done by design. You want to catch a team, you can you can play them head up, and that's that's the ones you're going to have to win. Indians are going to have to go in there. They're going to have to beat Detroit. They're going to have to beat Minnesota. They and have Chicago. seven games with them and Chicago, and they're got, they got seven with Kansas City. Not that they can catch them, but you, it's your division. You're going to have to go out and beat those guys, and, and not like play 500 ball. You're going to have to go in and win the series, every one of them. You can't just sit around and, and say let's play 500 ball and that's going to do it. You've got to go in and dominate. To center Almonte sprinting back. He feels like he's got room and he does make the catch to end the inning. Blue Jays go in order. The Detroit Tigers, and there will be a post game fireworks show following that ball game. It is presented by Wayside Furniture. Check uh, Indians.com for your tickets. Jason Kipnis takes ball one up and in. R.A. Dickey. Nine up, nine down so far. Kitten is showing bunt takes down and in 2 and 0. Oh. Fouls it back. Kipnis slaps it to left field, and that will be the first hit of the night for Cleveland. Leadoff hit for Jason Kipnis here in the fourth. Well, he was able to stay on that one. That was a two seam fastball. Up out over the plate, he just stayed on it. He had a couple of fastballs to hit as that ball goes off the glove of Revere. Almost lost sight of it for a, a while. Kia in the driver's seat shows you that Francisco Lindor is smoking hot. 
417 average in his last 25 games. 18 scored, a dozen driven home. You'll notice that Josh Tolley, the Toronto catcher, doesn't use a traditional catcher's mitt. What's it like a first baseman's glove? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a little more size to it in the opening. There's Lindor nice drives one in the right field, and the Indians have back-to-back -back singles to open the fourth. Let's go down to Andre, who has more on what the Indians are trying to do offensively tonight. I talked to Ty Van Berkley, and you know, you guys talked earlier about moving up in the box. He said he told all of his hitters, if you're willing to do it, do it. But if you don't want to, don't do it. He says, use your hands. Don't use all your body. Let your hands do their work tonight. And the other thing he said is it's a little bit like going against a sinker pitcher. And you said this in the beginning of the game, Matt. If it's high, let it fly. You know, let it fly. If it's yep. low, let it go. He goes the same way you would against a sinker ball pitcher. Well, when you think about it, it sort of makes sense where if you, and, and guys don't move around in the box like they used to, but if you stay back there, if you were to move up, it would stop that ball from moving a little bit more by the time, whether it's a foot or not, I would think. I mean, it, it, it makes sense, but it has to be a comfort for the guys that are going to hit. Guys, some will not change. Right back to Dickey. He goes to second for one on the first. Double play. Yeah, an easy one six three one hopper right into the glove. He feeds to Lewinsky who makes the the throw coming across the bag on the move as we told you last night. He makes every throw on the move. Easy double play for Dickey. Does the fact that he throws. More fastballs. Is that something he does to keep guys from. I, I don't remember him throwing this many fastballs to, to be honest with you the last time we saw a pitch. Santana's going to get a two out RBI single to center field, and the Indians will get their first run. It's a 5 1 ball game, their third hit in the inning. Unfortunately, their streak was stopped last night when it comes to two out runs. It stopped at 12, but uh, this guy leads the team in two out RBIs is uh, Carlos Santana. And there you'll see he got a high one. That stayed letter high, and that ball knuckled off the bat. It, you know, it had a funny uh, spin to it going up into center field. But the Indians are on the board. Their third hit in the inning. The thing about a knuckleballer is he can mow him down like he did in the first three innings, nine in a row. But you could string together five and six hits real quick off a guy like this, too. The strange things happen with knuckleballers. I've seen him pitch like Tom Candiotti, who used to be with the Indians and these Blue Jays. They can go for a while and, and, and be throwing a no hitter and then all of a sudden it blows up and you can't get it out and straight and, you know wild pitches happen and the, and the knuckleball strange things happen to knuckleball pitchers. Gomes cuts and misses you know you get a couple guys on you can hit when he's given up 22 homers yep. this year. You might be able to get one that sits up in the strike zone and hit one out and bring you right back in. The, 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 what the Indians have to do right now is hold this Blue Jay offense down for a few more in. Strikes him out. Indians get a run. They trail it 5 1.
Time now to tweet your strongest fan photo to us using the hashtag STO Data Strong Fan for a chance to have one of your photos shown during an upcoming telecast. It's all courtesy of T Mobile, and we'll have our strongest fan photo coming up later in the game. For Toronto here in the fourth inning, top of the order. The beat should be the last hitter for Crockett. Ground ball right at Jason Kipnis, and the second baseman will throw him out. One away. That will be the last batter that Kyle Crockett faces. He gets all three left handed batters. Terry Francona will go to Austin Adams. We'll be right back. Just took a pitch up and away and slapped it inside the bag for an RBI single. He would come around and score. Then in the second, off the wall, just beyond the reach of Michael Brantley, drove in two runs with that double. And then he would come home to score on a sack fly, just barely eluding the tag of Jan Gomes. Yeah, some kind of night up to this point. He's having just a spectacular year. Austin Adams is going to come out and try and get him out for the first time tonight. 23rd ball game Austin's appeared in. Two balls, one strike. In 27 career games against the Indians, Josh Donaldson has 27 runs batted in.
you look at Donaldson. He's not a monster. No, he's not a. He's but not he, that big of a guy. He's no runt either. At six feet, two hundred twenty pounds, he generates a lot of bat speed too. Ballpark certainly has helped him because he feels now you see he doesn't overswing and have to try to pull the ball to hit it with power or drive it to the gaps. He can certainly do it here much easier than it was in Oakland to do. And you don't see him overswing like that foul ball there. It, it beat him, but he he just fouled it off. He's got his third hit of the night. Brantley trying to cut it off. Donaldson's gonna hold. Now he's gonna take off, and the throw gets away from Fitness because it handcuffed him. What did Brantley bobble that ball because Donaldson stopped and then took off again? Well, that's a good question. I kind of took my eye. I saw, I saw Donaldson stop and I, I put my head down. I was going to right single. He threw him a, a, a slider, is what he did, and, and he pulls it, gets it over the head to third base there. And then when Brantley gets over to cut it off, he just held on to it and then he didn't hustle and throw it. So that's better hustle. That just wasn't a heads up play by Brantley right there. You see, he, he came to a stop. He expected to hold, and Michael got too nonchalant with that ball and held it in his hand, and Donaldson just took off. And then by that time, he couldn't make a good throw. And they give him a double. Well, you have to. That was a mistake made by Brantley for not getting it in. Jose Batista has walked twice tonight. Batista goes into his stretching regimen. He's always twisting. This guy's and never. He's never standing still. You're right. He's always, always like the the, the side, the obliques. <laughs> Here's the O2. Yes. Got him looking. Yes, it was. He locked him up. That was a nice little slider. Two down. Look at it on our Nissan pitch tracker. It's coming inside. It stays right there. Inside edge. He couldn't pull the trigger. And that was a good pitch. So Adams gets the strikeout. And it will bring up Edwin Encarnacion. It's ball one. And a little bit low, two balls, no strikes. Donaldson at second base with two away. Indians have a three man shift to the left side of the infield. One of the few well, right handed hitters that you see that kind of a shift for. You remember in this first at bat against Bauer, he had a, a 2 0 pitch, and then he yeah. 
he ended up popping it up. He swung at a high fastball. Here you get the 2 0 slider, and he's swinging. He was looking dead red and guessing, and he wanted to see how far he could hit it. You know, player of the month, he's been hot. He wants to hit him far. Out of play. What you, I think you said it before. Slumps tend to follow hot streaks. It's just the they way can. the game yeah. averages out over. You can't stay hot and get all the breaks for, you know, over a month. You know what I mean? If you do, it's your special year. Then your name's I Joe guess, DiMaggio. Well, that and, and this year it's Josh Donaldson. And this guy. They're both having great years. But, you know, to stay that as hot, 26 game hitting streak, yeah. Sooner or later, things go against you. The 2 2. All right back. Well, we saw with Jason Kipnis, he had a phenomenal month of May. I mean, a month of May that we haven't seen 50 plus hits. And it's not that he cooled off, but you just can't maintain yeah. that kind of level of play. It's just not possible. Yeah, when you have a month that, that you, like you say, 50 hits and everything goes and everything falls. And he had a he had a very good next month too, but it, it was like 33 <laughs> hits or something like that. It paled in comparison. Yes. Here's the two-two. Took the sting out of his bat. Pops it to center. And Almonte makes the play. No runs, a hit, a man left. We played four. It's Toronto five, Cleveland one. Northern Ohio Honda dealers by the Cleveland Clinic call for an appointment today and by the game-changing all-new Ford F-150 the future is tough Lake, Lake Ontario here in that Toronto looks cold doesn't it I'd like to take a dip in there right now it's warm <laughs> inside the yes, dome it is. Night. although they did open the roof and it's been quite pleasant Lonnie Chisnall going to lead off for the Indians here in the fifth. And a strike call. Because the knuckleball is so different and so unique, and so few people have been able to master it, right? And therefore, very few people truly understand it. There are a lot of great quotes about knuckleball pitchers and, and what the pitch does over the years. Our buddy Dave Caldwell at player profiles listed a couple of his favorites and two I absolutely love. One of them comes from Charlie Lau who was a, the late great hitting, hitting coach, coach. Right. Taught a number of great hitters over the years. He said there are two theories on hitting the knuckleball and neither one works. <laughs> <laughs> and my other favorite one is Willie Stargell the late Hall of Famer. He said 
Throwing a knuckleball for a strike is like throwing a butterfly with hiccups across the street and into your neighbor's mailbox. Hey, a <laughs> butterfly with hiccups. <laughs> oh God. Johnson lays off. Josh Tolley though he's come up with a his own at least theory on how to catch the knuckleball. He'll, he'll sometimes you'll notice he'll he'll set up a little bit side saddle. Yeah. And it frees up his elbow. Look how he just drops the glove. He doesn't set a target. Right. You don't you just, go out to catch right. it. You let it come to you. He just lets that glove kind of hang limp. And then when the pitch comes, he just flips it up and, and tries to catch it instead of stabbing at Soft it. Soft hands, yeah. I, I, but he also goes a little bit side saddle because he said it before he was blocking his own elbow out. Well, that's, that makes sense to me. You know, with a traditional pitcher, you kind of have an idea. Which way the ball's going to break? It's you know called breaking ball, curveball, right. or slider. With this thing, it could go left, right. So he said, "I need all the movement behind the plate I can get." You know, there's there's so few of them around anymore. It used to be, you know, the, you, you only throw a knuckle ball when you're pretty much done with the game. Your fastball left you, and you, you know you you're not an effective pitcher. You either go to a different motion, or you learn how to throw a knuckle ball. But it, it it takes a while. Wakefield and then Candiotti and then before that you got Huff and you got the Negro boys, Wilbur Wood. I mean there's so few. That's why it's such a small fraternity that these guys get together, they'll help each and every one of them out if they can because the, the, they share information. Well, it wasn't so much that his career was over, but he was definitely at a crossroads when Buck Showalter, his pitching coach, Oral Hershiser, and Mark Connor, the bullpen coach, they called him in back in 05 and said, What do you think about becoming a knuckleball pitcher full time? And he thought about it and said, All right, I'll do it. And the rest is history. Indians go 1 2 3. Middle of the fifth, 5 1 in Toronto. We're back on the road to glory for week two of the high school football season. It's a big county showdown this week when Bart Swain's Elyria Pioneers <laughs> take on Lorraine High School. Jeff Phelps, Frank Stams, Ryan Cavanaugh have the action Friday night at 11 on Sports Time. Ohio. Who's the favorite in that one? Do you know? Uh, Elyria. Okay. They've got a pretty good squad. At least it appears that way in the early going. Troy Tulowitzki, an RBI single in the first, drove in a run with a sacrifice fly in the second. It was a pop up that sent Jason Kittness out sort of into no man's land. It was shallow right center. It was one of those balls that was tough for the outfielders to get to. He went back, but by the time he got it, he was in a full backpedal like an NFL defensive back. 
and had to try to plant and throw. And Donaldson yeah. was able to beat it home. Well, you wouldn't have tried with a score. It's 4 nothing, so they could be aggressive. The throw comes up, it's a little offline. If that throw would have been online, they would have had a much better chance, I think. Gomes would have been able to tag him. He had to go up and get that ball. Looked like it had a little tail to it. Tampa to third. Chris Johnson. Good throw across. One down. In game recap brought to you by your Toyota dealers in the first inning. Troy Tulowitzki and a hanging breaking ball and snuck, uh, slapped in a run. Two nothing. Donaldson thought he hit one out of here. It was off the wall. Drove in two in the second. And then the sack fly we showed you made it five to nothing. Only run for Cleveland. A two out RBI single by Carlos Santana. Really a shame that came after the double play ball by Brantley. You know, had Michael come up with a hit there, this this could be a different game right now. Then it had Dickey maybe on the ropes a little bit there in that inning. But the knuckleballer has been able to keep the Indians at bay to this point. Justin Smoke over two. He chops it slowly to third. Johnson's throw, perfect. Two down. Our injury report tonight is brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk. And this is not good for Kansas City. An outbreak of the chicken box. Alex Rios, Kelvin Herrera. I don't know a lot about chicken pox, but that's not doesn't sound good. Uh, no, I mean it usually attacks kids. I was going to say, isn't it more dangerous yeah, the older the you get? Kids when you get into school, and you know if you've had it, then you don't get it again. My knowledge, but usually it's uh, yeah, it's for for younger kids. Kevin Pilaro for two. Bullseye. Austin Adams throwing the heat. But I think if you get it when you get older, it gets worse. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yes, he did. Did you see that pitch, Rick? Took Ninety-seven off. with movement. Hey, Austin Adams has a great arm. If he can ever, he's going to get it and learn to command pitches. That thing took off, and you said it was 97. Yeah. He's got a good slide. You know, this guy, he's, he has potential. Love his arm. Popped up. Is it playable? No. Nice effort by Jan Gomes. Man, he went all the way almost right into our camera down there. Slid almost into Andre. That's our camera. <laughs> I'm going to send along a uh, happy birthday wishes to Regina DeLuca from Niagara Falls, New York, turning 91. Pat's happy mom. birthday. Pat's mom. Here he comes into your right into your living room. She used to make me meatballs and, and sauce on Sundays. Every Sunday, man. We'd go over there and eat. It was awesome. Oh. So, Mrs. DeLuca, I used to call her. I, I can almost do. smell 91. it from here. Oh, my goodness. It was awesome. A little sausage. Yeah, whatever you are. Chop slowly to short. Lindor has to hurry. Pilar can fly. The throw. In time. Yeah, nice play. And the Blue Jays go one, two, three.
Time now for our data strong fan photo of the game. And remember, you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO Data Strong Fan for a chance to have one of your photos shown, shown during an upcoming telecast, all courtesy of T Mobile. For Cleveland, it's Jerry Sands, Jason Kipnis, and Francisco Lindor. Fouled back out of play. I was talking last inning before Dickey retired the side in order about how it was 05 when he had that meeting with Buck Showalter and Oral Hershiser and Mark Connor when he was with Texas. Right. And, you know, he was, he felt like he was healthy and rehab. The injuries were gone, but his fastball was topping out at 85, 86 miles an hour. And he said, Everything felt good, but I'd let the ball go, and it was just like nothing. Nothing there, right. And so he said, we had a seven-minute conversation. He said, you talk about a life-altering conversation. But he said, I'll go to the minors and become a full-time knuckleball pitcher and see what happens. And You know, good for him. It paid off, and it paid off at a late age because it's allowed him, you know, to pitch. He's 40 years old. Line drive, right field, and a diving pitch. By Jose Batista. His knee hit down pretty hard on that turf. Yeah, that's a line drive. I thought it was going to get down. He hit it very well. It stayed up long enough. And yeah. Older you get, the more that tends to well, show up. Yeah, it does. But he made the play. Look at Dickie. He thought it was going to get down. He comes up and makes the play before it hits the turf. You were talking about Dickie being 40. I think we talked about this the other day with Scotty Bales when he saved a game. That the knee 48. Started. He was 48, 48 years, years old. old. Yes, he was. And Scotty was a rookie back then. And he came in. Wasn't that the biggest difference in age for yeah. a save compared to a starter? Yeah. Um, how that went 24 well, years. we saw him at the golf outing. That's right the Indians golf on he knew we were talking about him because he was with his boys that he was golfing with yeah. the Schubert's <laughs> <laughs> just seeing those two in the carts. I said to myself. <laughs> I got to go the other way. Here's the ground ball to second <laughs> Ryan Goins goes out getting this two down. Well again Dickey has, has been very good tonight. He's thrown a lot of fastballs uh, for me but there's one right there a little comeback heater but he still has the knuckleball. That's the big out of the ball game. He got two for the price of one getting first and second nobody out. Got Brantley to ground into the double play but he's got the strikeout ball working. He has four of them. The early run certainly helped him out. And he's a nice quick inning here. Well he's had some quick innings. One two three he has set down seven. In a row.
popular corner bar open to all fans at Progressive Field. The $13 district tickets presented by Sports Time Ohio. A big hit, so get yours today. Tickets available only at Indians.com. So Zach McAllister is going to be coming on. Fifth pitcher of the night for the Indians. Adams did a nice job in his inning at two thirds, gave up just the one hit. Gallister coming on. Goins, Tolly, Rivera. The scheduled hitters here in the bottom half of the sixth. So far, it's really been all Toronto. They did their damage in the first two innings, and then the Indians have been able to put three zeros on the board. But that knuckleball has been a little tough to to handle. Yeah, and Gavin Floyd is up in the Indians bullpen. We might see him. This would be a game you certainly can. Debut. Absolutely. Three left-handed hitters do up. Ryan Goins, Josh Tolley, Ben Revere. Goins 0 for 2 tonight. Strike one on a fastball. Missed outside. Fouled back. Off speed pitch, it was up, but I guess with two strikes, Goins wasn't going to take any chances, and he fouled her off. Very a breaking ball. Blew it by him. Good heater. One down. Hey, let's go down to Andre now who has a little more on Gavin Floyd who's up in the bullpen right now. Yeah, if Gavin Floyd is up, I would think you're going to see him because Terry Francona said the way they're going to use him is they're going to get him as warmed up as they possibly can because he's a starter. They don't want to use him in the wrong way. They're not going to use him like they do every other reliever. But when they get him up, they plan on using him. So I think right. we would see him, and they're going to try to get him as warm as they can, whether it's this inning or the next inning. We probably will see the debut as an Indian for Gavin Floyd. Well, that's good. It's been a long time coming for him. And you're, you're right. They're going to treat him like a starter. So, you know, McAllister may have this sixth and seventh. And you look at the eighth for him, possibly. Breaking ball, a little bit low. Inside corner painted it at 96. And the count is one and two. Let's see if there, there's some movement on it. Yeah. Boy, down and in right there. Perfect pitch. You can see huh. totally with that swing. It was like, oh, please let me just get a piece of this. <laughs> Looks like he fouled it off his thumbs. <laughs> Talk about going inside. Watch this. I mean, it almost hit him in the hand. He's just lucky to get some wood on it. Chopped to short. Lindor cuts it off. Two away. Well, an off day tomorrow, and then the Indians will be in Motown to kick off a big series against the Detroit Tigers. Corey Kluber will go against Miguel Cabrera in that Detroit lineup. Our coverage begins at 6.30 with Indians live, followed by the first pitch at 7 here on Sports Time Ohio.
Two down top of the order Ben Revere he's two for three with two singles two runs scored. One hop smash to second and the Blue Jays go one two three we'll head to the seventh Toronto five Cleveland one. By Kia. Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin Furniture and freestanding locations. And by AT&T Uverse, has more channels on the go than cable. Now inside the Rogers Center tonight, Blue Jays jumped the Indians early. Five runs in the first two innings. And R.A. Dickey has made it stand up through six. He's given up just one run. Michael Brantley, Carlos Santana, Jan Gomes up here in the seventh inning. Dickey was, well, to put it bluntly, he was bad. First 18 starts this year, his record was two and ten. Ten losses, and his ERA was over five. And in those 18 starts he had given up 17 home runs. Since then though in his last nine starts he's unbeaten at 6 yeah. and 0. The ERA is down at two full runs and he's only allowed five home runs. The thing of it is that you know when he has given up runs the offense has uh, come to his rescue. And they scored for him. And then he's also pitched a lot of good baseball. One down as Brantley flies to left. One of the things that he did one of the adjustments he made was just getting back to going back to what I mentioned earlier about what the the old wise sages told him about finishing in an athletic position trying to stay in the door frame. He was starting to spin off. He was starting to fly uh -huh. open and that knuckleball wasn't it wasn't knuckle, wasn't going the way he was thought it was right. good and it was flattening out. And I think that's why he you was know, probably getting knocked a, around. It's a fine line you know and when you when you think about it as a professional athlete. Every once in a while you get knocked out of whack and you've got to go back to the basics. Yeah. To what got you there you go back to square one and say hey look I've got to start doing this and you know if it's the old guys that, that he talked to. You know before he started pitching and getting into it. You go back there. And if it helps you good and you know it, just a couple of things have to click for you to get back to to being yourself again. You know what's great about being able to lean on a huff a Negro even a Wakefield. They did it for so long. Right. They've got all the answers. They've tried everything. They know what works, what doesn't work. Well, and they don't have to pitch anymore. And they, they can, yeah. They can. That's his fifth strikeout, two down. <laughs> Our great clip of the game from last night, Jan Gomes. Two swings, two incredible home runs to straightaway center. Both tied the game, one in the seventh, 
one in the ninth. They were almost identical yeah, pitches, identical close. swings. Almost looked like a replay. Yeah. You were showing. The home run that he hit off Antonio Osuna, though, was the, or uh, not Antonio, that was his uncle. Roberto Osuna was the first save that he had blown as the closer. Wow. Dickey is on a roll. Ten in a row retired by the knuckleballer. Stretch time in Toronto brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Season tickets offer the best perks, including savings and access to Tribe Rewards. Today's Tribe Rewards TV code is Frank Kona. Visit Indians.com season tickets for complete details. Gavin Floyd makes his season debut tonight for the Indians here in Toronto. It's been a long road back. The last time he pitched in a ball game in the big leagues was June 19th. Last year for Atlanta. The last time he pitched in a ball game in relief was four years ago, and it happened right here at the Rogers Center. No kidding. Well, he's coming in to uh, <laughs> welcome back Donaldson, Bautista, and Carnacion. The first three he's going to face. He had a refracture of his right elbow on March the 10th. He felt some soreness. Said he just didn't feel right. They took a look at it and said, "Uh oh, it's the same injury that he suffered right last year with Atlanta." So they went in, did more surgery to stabilize it, and by all accounts, he's healthy, he's strong, he's rare and ready to go. But Rick, it's been so long since he's been in the game, and he didn't have a, a spring training really to get himself ready. So who knows what to expect? Yeah, I mean you don't. You just go out there. You're you're happy for him because he's worked so hard to get back. Here's Josh Donaldson standing in, and Gavin Floyd at 94 over the outside corner. In on him a little bit. It's 0 and 2. Even for a veteran like Floyd, the adrenaline's got to be surging. Well, right yeah, now. you would certainly think so. But you know, once you get out there, you get that first pitch. You, you throw a couple of strikes. You can take a, a deep breath and say, Phew. "Breaking ball, foul back." 
I thought it was interesting too, Rick. As Floyd came into the game, Jan Gomes, before he went behind the plate, he went to the mound to talk to Floyd. He hasn't caught him probably since yeah. spring training, yeah. maybe in a bullpen session. Yeah. What do you throw again? Yeah. <laughs> what do you like to throw? Yeah. You... Well, it's funny, but you're right. Fastball away, and Donaldson spoils it. Well, he comes right out of the chute. And he's throwing strikes. Now the 0 2. Another fastball. And as you said too, Rick, I mean, he hasn't pitched all year. And he comes in and he's got a guy that might be the MVP this year. And two guys behind him that have each hit 30 home runs yeah, already. Yeah, you're facing the best part you could do. Welcome back. Let's go. We're gonna go face the best. Breaking ball, Donaldson wouldn't chase. It's okay. It's Good the first pitch. pitch that he's thrown that hasn't been called a strike or swung at. Beats nice it into the cutter. ground. Lindor. Nice little cutter there. One away. Well, it doesn't look like a guy that's been gone all that time. No. I mean, his fastball 94. That cutter was at 91 92. We saw a breaking ball, just the one. Well. When he was in spring training, and they came out, and you know, I, I know it's the end of winter, and he's coming to a new ball club, and he's throwing. But you know, Callaway, Mickey Callaway, the pitching coach, says, "Boy, he, he's, he's had good stuff. He, he's throwing the ball very well." I'm shocked. I'm surprised. Everybody was excited. You know, they were excited about yeah. you know how he was throwing the baseball down there until he hurt his arm again. So now you just really you don't know what to expect. Michael Brantley makes the grab and left two down. Time for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulaski. All right, thanks, Al. Tell you what, the Twins, not only Miguel Sano, but Eddie Rosario, they've got a couple of rookies who've made they got it some big young guys playing, yeah, playing very well for them this year. And that's what you need when you have a, a turnaround season like Minnesota's having. You need people to come up and pitch their play like they were supposed to with no injuries. And you need some young players to come up and, and give you a, a lift. And this team started playing better when that happened to them, the Indians. You know, you get a couple of some young blood. Some excitement. Oh, nice pitch by Floyd. 95 with some downward movement and Encarnacion right over the top. Look at the movement. That was pretty firm right there. Curveball and a beauty. Encarnacion lays off. Well, when you get ahead, that's what you do. You try to get him to chase that pitch. Donaldson did not chase it, and Encarnacion did not chase it. To third. Chris Johnson long throw and a one two three inning for Gavin Floyd in his season debut for the tribe.
and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Stay tuned for Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care coming up after the game. Did you see Gavin's reaction? He took a swig of whatever it was in that bottle. I don't think it's what he thought it was. <laughs> he looked at that and said, what am I drinking? Look at him like. <laughs> the James are the Seriously. His reaction was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's try a fresh one. <laughs> I'll give you a fresh one. <laughs> Take a look at this, Rick. Rick, look at this. Look at him. What am I drinking here? What's up? <laughs> I don't think he's endorsing hey, that. Hey, bartender, promise. this isn't what I ordered. <laughs> Give me a shot with this, will you, please? Oh, that was beautiful. He's not going to be endorsing that. <laughs> Give him a blue one. Why <laughs> just an all awaiting the 2 0? I didn't see it. He pops it up. Foul ground. Donaldson. One away. <laughs> well, Josh Tomlin there in the foreground. Boy, he's been pitching really well. That's great to see. Who knows, you know, what to expect as we go down the road here with Gavin Floyd if it's just going to be, you know, some spot. Opportunities out of the bullpen. I can't imagine he'll be built up enough to get a. I wouldn't a chance so. to start. Yeah, I would four years so. over. You know what? The, 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 it could be uh, they need a seventh inning guy. Who could be that? Maybe. Nice play by Ryan Dolan, the second baseman, has really shined in this series for Toronto. Two down. Yeah, you need to have range when you're playing on the carpet. And although this is a, a slower style carpet, you know, there's just some guys, heavy, heavy footed guys don't like the turf. The guys that can run, they stay on top of it. They're like little bugs on the carpet. Well, I think back to the great Toronto teams here, Tony Fernandez, I think he was at short then when yeah. Robbie Alomar was at right. second. Yes, he was. And it was a different style uh, uh, of turf. That was the old, more like Astro turf yeah, they played. Right. On. He felt like he could run really fast on that. I just checked, and Dickey has one complete game this year, and he's uh, he certainly has the opportunity here. He's thrown 80 pitches and still has only given up three hits. Yeah, that complete game came back on May 21st here against the Angels. Well, he's pitched much better in this place than he has on the road. It's like a tale of two cities. Seven and three on the year in his 14 game start. And unless the Indians come back, and I mean in a quick hurry, and they have four outs to do it, he will be eight and three here. The 2 2. 13 in a row. R.A. Dickey dominating the Indians lineup here tonight.
promised earlier, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite on this date back in 1990 at old Cleveland Stadium. Dave Steve put his name in the record books. Jerry Brown flies out a no hit game for the Blue Jays right hander. First no hitter in Blue Jays history and he came so close so many times. Before he had a eight and two thirds going against the Indians one time and a bad hop with two outs in the ninth got over the head of the second baseman and stopped him. Armstrong coming on now for the Indians. We've seen him a couple of times this year. Dave Steve no hitter I noticed that in the video on that team you had Tony Fernandez and Pat Borders right and later became teammates in Cleveland with the Indians in 97 and on that team it was a year before Robbie Alomar came to Toronto you know you think about Robbie Alomar he went in the Hall of Fame as a Blue Jay I think rightfully so but he was like five years it seemed longer. Didn't it seem like he spent a lot more than just five years there? Yeah. Five straight gold well, gloves as a Blue Jay, yeah. two world championships. Yeah, the five years he spent here were very good. Line to left and a base hit for Troy Tulowitzki. Our Pat O'Brien Chevrolet play of the game back in that second inning. This was key. He almost hit it out and Michael Brantley almost caught it but he didn't Two scored that made it four to nothing and then later a sack fly would make it five to nothing in the second inning. Yeah that was the last that's, hitter that Bauer faced. That's been it. That's all they needed. Yeah they came out early they sucker punched the Indians and Bauer early and uh, they haven't needed much after that because Dickey's taking care of the rest. This crowd of 46,538. This is a 15th sellout of the season. Hasn't had much to really get crazy about since the early going. But this is a bigger crowd than the first night, huh? So this is the biggest crowd of the three. They had 45, I think, on the first night. 46, 643. So that one was just a few more okay. tonight. Both 46. Low and away. One and one. Sean Armstrong swung out and missed. It's a second stint with the Indians. He had uh, two scoreless appearances back in August. But you noted at the time you liked his arm. Yeah, like the stuff we saw. Two and two. Justin Smoke over for three tonight. Well, we had a chance to pretty much see everybody tonight. Bauer only won an inning a third. Manship an inning. Crockett an inning. Adams pitched the most an inning in two thirds. McAllister, Floyd, now Armstrong. No manager wants to have to go through his entire bullpen, but if you're going to have to do it, you at least do it with an off day tomorrow. Yeah, you get everybody in. There's nothing wrong with that. And you get Shaw, you give Allen the day off, and let him get two days off before we go into Detroit for the weekend. So you know that's, that's the way to do it. Get these guys in, let them work. They went through a stretch where you remember the starters were so good. 
The bullpen wasn't getting used. They were throwing after ball games. Low full count. To Lewitsky, leadoff man at first here in the eighth. Three two locked him up. Good pitch inside corner. And Smoke knew it. That's 95 miles an hour. Well, place beautifully. I mean, there's nothing. He was not looking for a pitch on the inside part of the plate here. That's well executed right there. That's nasty. Yeah, he could. He locked him up. Big man looking to, to extend the arms. Will go down as a strikeout victim out number one. Kevin Pilar is 0 for 3 tonight, just one out of 10 in the series. Some just straight downward action to it. Yeah, a nice slider. That ball goes down. Lewitsky at first with one out and a 2 2 count for Kevin Pilar. Armstrong fires and a foul back. Sean Armstrong is a North Carolina native. He went to high school at West Craven High. That's West. With a T on the end of it. Wes Craven, <laughs> the great <laughs> horror director and producer. Sick. He just passed away a couple of days ago at 76. Nightmare on Elm Street? Uh huh. No, I never saw it. 2 <laughs> 2. I think he was the guy behind the scream. Movies. I think there's about a half dozen of those by now. Yeah, right. Here's the payoff. And a fly ball straight up in the air. Kipnis. Two down. I'm gonna bring up Ryan Goins. Figure the Blue Jays almost had to trade Jan Gomes because you can't have a Goins and a Gomes in the same lineup. <laughs> that, would be, that would be tough. Gomes, Goins. Way up high, ball one.
Armstrong went to East Carolina out of high school. And he had a, a right shoulder problem. So he redshirted his freshman year. Had uh, labrum surgery. You know, a lot of times that's a. I don't, know what the, one. I don't know what the percentages are, but it's not a slam dunk. You come back after that. No, that's a lot tougher than the elbow. That's for sure. Well, in the past, 20, 30 years ago, career you're ender. done. Yeah. Or you go to the bullpen and do what you can do. Maybe you could even get it back in that rotator a couple years ago. Indians ended up making him an 18th round pick. Meaning he was the 548th overall selection in the 2011 draft. Yeah. So just getting to the big leagues is pretty big accomplishment. You know, you're absolutely right. When you go that low and that many people picked ahead of you, you just never know. Cody Anderson, who started earlier in this series, last night, in fact. He was the 428th overall player in the same draft. Wow. So you got a guy at 428 and a guy at 548 already on your big league club. Nice stories. And the one two is down and in. There's well, Cody. He, he Cody pitched, pitched a well of yeah, a game. Yeah, he, he went out there and gave him a strong six innings. It was good to see. As you pointed out, I like the fact that he broke out the curveball second or third time through he, the he, order, and, and it was a good one. And he didn't throw it a lot, but he just planted the seed that, hey, I've got another pitch, and he made some really good pitches with it. It got by him yeah. right in the center. Just underneath his glove. Don't know if he felt that that ball was going to be up a little higher or not, but it, it was hit pretty well. So Goins gets his first hit. See that hit the dirt. I don't know if he picked it up right away either. He sees it and that ball was down. That was sports. So, boy, we we talk about it. How many times you're 60 feet away from the hitter, but by the time you deliver that ball, the next thing you know, you've got one coming back that's below me or below. You don't really see it. What do you do? It seems like the ones that the, the, they make the plays on the hard hit balls. It's those ones that are sort of change ups that they yeah. Because they they don't know how hard it's hit. You're not you know depending on how you finish your delivery. Most guys are finishing where they only have maybe one eye on the ball. Well, interesting that you mentioned that because last night on the first home run that Jan Gomes hit off the starter. Yeah. Uh, Marco Estrada. Right. Estrada said afterwards that on the follow through after he had delivered the pitch on his follow through he slipped and his he said I never saw it. He goes, but I heard it and it yeah. didn't sound good. No, he didn't want to see it. That's all he had to do was he hear it. He said, I've heard that sound before. I knew it wasn't good. <laughs> I didn't see it. Well, you didn't want to unless you looked up into the seats. But that, uh, that yeah, that tied the game 2-2. Two -two. Oh, 2 pitch. It stays fair. Jam sandwich. Sands takes it himself. We will go to the night in Toronto. Last chance for the tribe. They're down 5-1.
righty. North of the border won't be for long. No, we'll be headed to Detroit after this one. R. A. Dickey has retired 13 in a row, and as as Jensen said, he looks like he could probably go out and pitch another complete game. But Rick, well, in seven out of the eight innings, it's been one, two, three, and I mean quick. I was just getting ready to say he came out of this shoot and went nine up, nine down. They got three hits out of the four hitters, and then he's retired 14 in a row. So, you know, it's been one of those nights. Now, if this is against the I hate to use the word normal. If this is against well, a conventional, conventional pitcher, right, right? You might be upset all these quick outs, but against a knuckleballer, there's nothing you can do yeah. here. I mean, early he was throwing some fastballs. He's settled in. He's been in total control. Knuckleball pitchers can make it look really silly, and then there's times where they can't get out of the second inning. And but it tonight, looked like I'm the Indians you, that might they have had one a, chance. They had a crack in the door. Three hits and four at bats, but the double play ball. Well, here's here's my point. I'm glad they have a day off tomorrow because then you can forget about it and come back Friday because sometimes knuckleballers can put hitters that were swinging the bat really well in a slump. I remember uh, why managers, is that so? Why I don't know. It messes that? their timing up or something. Whatever you know, they say um, it can. You talk to some hitters, and I remember Grover used to give some guys days off against knuckleball pitch. And there you go. Kipnis gets his second base hit. That's the First hit since the fourth inning. He snaps a string of 14 in a row, retired by Dickey. You know, this is pretty much the approach you take. And Kipnis had two fastballs to hit tonight that he swung at. And I think his last hit came out of fastball. But he takes the knuckleball the other way that that time. So four hits, all singles. And uh, Lindor followed Kipnis in that fourth inning with a hit. Latroy Hawkins is up just in case. And you always have to have it just in case with a knuckleballer because as, as you have to have said, it, it yeah. can happen in a hurry. It, it can happen in a hurry, but you have a you, as managers and you know how they think you have to have it just in case until you get that 27th out. You always have to, you know, be ready. You never know. So it can happen so quickly on you in the game of baseball. A couple of swings, the next thing you know. You get two guys on, pop one out, you're up one. I'm sure that's what's, what Terry Frank I, I will thinking say right this now. the Indians' bullpen did a great job of keeping it a five to one game. They just couldn't do anything with Dickey. So you can't ask the pitchers to do anything better. Hit hard foul. Well, and, and this just tells you what we were just talking about. John Gibbons doesn't feel safe because he's got another guy up in the bullpen too. Not only does he have Hawkins up, but he's got a second reliever. And I don't know if that's so soon. I think it's Mark Lowe. Mark Lowe, okay. And he's not taking any chances. The 0-2. Lindor with a grounder to short to Lewinsky. Turns two to end the game. Complete game victory for R.A. Dickey, his 10th win of the year, as the Blue Jays win it 5 to 1 and take two out of three from Cleveland. Toronto goes to 76 and 57. They'll stay a game and a half in front of New York in the AL East. The Indians go to 64 and 68. They'll have an off day tomorrow before opening a three game series against the Tigers on Friday night. Al Dickey in total command today. The Indians came in here and won game one. They played them for extra innings into game two. But tonight they just they came out early. 